I'm a big fan of supporting local journalism, and usually my paper of record, the San Francisco Chronicle, is pretty good. But this week they decided to run this. With coronavirus antibodies fading fast, vaccine hopes fade too. From the jump, let's just go ahead and debunk this. No, uh, no hopes are fading for a coronavirus vaccine. That is a bullshit headline, and it accompanies a mostly badly written bullshit article. Let's start with the study that it's based on, which is not bullshit, but it is preprint, which means that it hasn't been peer reviewed yet. We're used to seeing that these days because of the whole pandemic thing. It's titled Longitudinal Evaluation and Decline of Antibody Responses in SARS-CoV-2 Infection. And it deals with a valid question that scientists have been concerned with for some time now. When a person is infected with COVID-19, their immune system produces antibodies to fight it. How long do those antibodies last? The answer to that question can help us understand the risk of someone being reinfected with the disease and also the best way to develop a vaccine because antibodies are a key part of how your body fights infection. But here's the thing, they're not the only part of your immune system. For a long time now, scientists have understood that your immune system is supported by white blood cells, which come in several delicious flavors. Uh, macrophages are white cells that chow down on bacteria, dying cells, dead cells, and other random things that you don't want floating around in your body. They leave behind antigens, which they highlight for two other kinds of white cells to attack. Those two cells are called B cells and T cells. B cells produce antibodies to kill the germs and T cells attack infected cells. Once the threat is over, in most cases, the antibodies go away. Does that mean that once all the antibodies are gone, that you no longer have any immunity to the disease in question? Happily, the answer to that is Probably not, because in many cases, your T and B cells remember the recipe for producing those antibodies and killing the germs. It's like Chex Mix. You can't have a constant supply of Chex Mix laying around the house unless you're very wealthy or you live with my mother, but you can keep the recipe on hand for those times when you are overwhelmed with the understandable desire to stuff yourself with salty, buttery deliciousness. That is Chex. I like Chex mix. Just like you don't need antibodies for every different germ that, you, that might find its way into your body, uh, so long as your cells still have that recipe to produce them. Of course, there are plenty of diseases that you can't be immune to forever, uh, because of one infection or one vaccine that you get, which more or less simulates an infection to teach your cells how to respond. You should get a flu shot, for instance, every single year because your immunity can wear down over time and because the uh, most likely flu culprit can change from season to season. So back to the study, King's College researchers followed about 90 COVID-19 patients for three months after their initial infection. And upon uh, testing their antibodies, they found that their level of antibodies peaked about three weeks after the uh, initial onset of symptoms. And then uh, it started declining after two or three months. Here's something they did not study uh, anything about any of the vaccines currently being developed. Their finding was essentially that COVID-19 antibodies behave like pretty much every other coronavirus that scientists know about. Those antibodies might last a few months or a few years. That's normal. The timing of it might help researchers developing vaccines or maybe it won't. It can definitely help with antibody testing, uh, which is used to tell whether or not someone has previously been infected with COVID-19. If it's been a couple of months since their initial infection, maybe those antibodies won't be able to be found. But it definitely, absolutely does not mean that vaccine hopes are fading. That's some clickbait panic porn bullshit, and the Chronicle should pull that article right now. 
as of this recording, it's been up for several days. And so at this point, it's probably too late now to, you know, the damage has been done. People are now going to be scared that a vaccine is never going to be viable, but at the very least they could issue a correction. But hey, this is what you get when major newspapers uh, release educated science journalists from their staff, as pretty much all of them did over the course of the past decade. Now we're in a pandemic and the newspapers we trust to give us accurate information about it are often publishing great helpful data and occasionally interspersing that with complete and utter garbage like this. And that is dangerous.